Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about MLflow experiments and MLflow runs, and I'm going to do so by describing a situation that many of you will find familiar. So let's say that you are working on a machine learning project or maybe data science project, and you need to train a model, right? So you have maybe a Jupyter notebook or maybe a Python script with some code to train the model. Maybe you have some go to process the data, the training data, let's say. You have also some parameters and maybe additional configurations, right? All of this in your Python script or Jupyter notebook. Now you decide to execute this code and generate a set of results, right? So you probably uh, were calculating some metrics and let's say that for now you were working on a, a binary classifier let's say so you were really interested in the accuracy this is just an example but let's say that in this case you got uh, let's say 90 percent of accuracy you also got some artifacts things like maybe plots or maybe files and of course you also saved the pickle file uh, in which you have the actual machine learning a model so you have something like model.pickle right now you think about this and think that you can improve this accuracy um you decide that you want to modify some parameters and configurations so you adjust a little bit those parameters and configurations and execute the code again now this new execution generates a new set of results So, for example, in this case, you got accuracy, accuracy 80%, right? You got also the same artifacts, plots, and files, and another model, a model.pickle file, with um, the parameters that you changed, you changed, right? Now, this is not good. Uh, it's not better than the previous run or the previous execution. So, you decide to modify something in the training code and also some configurations, right? and execute the code again and you generate a new set of uh, results so in this case you get 85 percent of accuracy and uh, another set of artifacts and the model.pickle file now you are here with let's say um in this situation and you are wondering if you can go back to 90 percent of accuracy but at this point you have modified the code, the parameters and configurations, and you are not really sure how to go back to this accuracy that you got in the first, let's say, trial. So let's start with each one of these executions. Um, MLflow, consider, in MLflow, we can consider each one of these executions as a ROM, because a ROM is basically the execution of any piece of machine learning code. So what we have here is uh, the first round, right? Then we have a second round, and finally the third round, right? Um, what MLflow allows you to do within rounds is to track all this data, the training code, the code that you used to train the to process the data, parameters, configurations, and also it allows you to. Uh, to track the matrix accuracy like accuracy or any other matrix that you are interested in artifacts and the model of course and using the python sdk you can track the changes across all these runs uh, very easily so going back to 90 percent of accuracy wouldn't be a problem if you are using the mlflow run approach now you have a problem because you were also running some let's say other experiments or a regressor and now you are wondering if there is a way to separate uh, these runs that corresponds to the classifier and the regressor well for this case mlflow provides the concept of experiment an mlflow experiment can be considered as a container for runs so for example in this case um, i said that this this is a classifier experiment and you can have another experiment um, maybe a regressor or something like that. So we can say, long story short, that the MLflow experiment is a container for runs that are associated to the same task. 
and a run is the execution of any piece of machine learning code. Um, using the Python SDK and MLflow, you can track all the changes across all these runs and also across different experiments. That's all for this video. In the next video, we're going to start to play around with the SDK and see how we can create and manage MLflow experiments. Thanks for watching this video and see you next time.